Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That is the one and only Bishop Samuel R. Blakes uh, off his CD project. And um, yeah, uh, we're not playing today. <laughs> I'm going to block you early. We ain't going to even start nothing today. This is Monday. 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 Yeah, we thank God for this marvelous Monday. Uh, right after, yes, uh, right after Easter, the resurrection uh, Sunday, we are grateful uh, to be back uh, in this space again uh, with you, sharing the word of God. So good afternoon to everybody. Hey, Juanita, I see you. God bless you. Yes, hello, hello, everybody. Now, I want you to swipe, swipe and invite Get somebody on here real quick uh, so I can get this word to you real quick and we can move on um, for the rest of this day. I'll tell you what, the word I have for you today, I believe is going to help you get through the rest of this week because a lot of times we are faced with difficulties and don't know how uh, to deal with them. And I want to, to kind of give you some answers today. Uh, today we are, of course, we are dealing with reset Man, God gave us some revelation on reset, even on yesterday, and uh, kind of utilizing our cell phone as an example, um, how many times your phone gets frozen, or, uh, you know, it, it slows down, or you can't get incoming calls, and God gave me revelation on how, even in the spiritual realm, sometimes you are slowed down because you need to be reset, or you're frozen in a place that things are not moving the way that they should. Or you can't get the income and you can't hear the voice of God anymore. So it's time to reset. Reset your life. And today I'm praying that you are cognizant of the fact and conscious of the fact that it is your season uh, to reset your life. To reset your life. And yesterday we celebrated, I mean, the greatest event in history. And that is uh, not only the death and burial of our Savior, but the powerful resurrection of our Savior. Man, uh, where, would we, where would we be today if he had not got up from the grave? He would have died like any other man, but with his own power, he got up. The Father raised the Son with all power in his hand. And now when we get to this place, many of us, this is where we stop. I hear preachers and I hear evangelists, man, we preach this word. And what a powerful story it is to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But don't you know that's not even where the story ends. We talk about three days later he got up. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. There is more to your Christian walk than the resurrection. And I want to enlighten you today. A lot of times when we get saved... We stop right there, but there is so there is so much more to your walk with Christ, your salvation, your life as a believer. Uh, what is next is the question. What's next? God, I'm saved now. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. So what's next? Now, for many of us here today, I hear a lot of preachers, man, I'm I'm hearing a lot of preachers on Periscope. We are identifying issues. We are identifying all the problematic uh, areas of our lives. And, and man, we are problematic and, and our marriage is problematic and our ministries and relationships. Man, we, gotta, we identify all these things. We bring it to the surface. But I don't hear many preachers telling us what the answer is. And I need to explain to you today there is a general answer to every dilemma that the believer faces. And it is what happens after Calvary, after the resurrection. There's a next step that you must take as a believer. And that is, you must know that you need the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of times people are bypassing the Holy Spirit, and we are not talking about him. We're not talking about the power of who he is in our ministry, in our lives. 
And I, I'm looking at John chapter 14 today. Even the disciples, the disciples were a little confused. In John chapter 14, they were asking Jesus, now listen, we understand that you're leaving and you're going back to the Father. And the man, Jesus was telling him, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Then he goes on to talk about in, in this heavenly place where he's going, he's preparing a mansion for them. And that's all fine and dandy. But then Jesus says, great works have I done and greater works shall you also do. Here's the question. How do we do these great works? Then Jesus gives us the answer. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. Now, that does not mean that I'll, I won't leave you undisturbed. Now, there's going to be some disturbing moments, but I will not leave you. This word comfort, comforter is paraclete, one to walk alongside of you, one that is an aid to you, one that will assist you in your Christian life. Now, I need you to swipe and invite, and I believe every believer needs to hear this word today. Man, you are not walking this walk alone. You're not in this race alone. You're not in the fight of life alone. And although you may be fighting some issues, and all of us have issues, but today I come to give you the answer to all of your issues, and that is the indwelling and empowering of the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, I give you power over every demonic force, every over every sickness, over every disease, and there's no force that will come against you that you will not be able to overcome. Stay in Jerusalem and be endued with power. Now, this power does not come just on its own. It comes through the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us don't even have a clue. We think that we are anointed. And some of what we call the anointing is simply being gifted or talented. That is not the anointing. Just because someone gets up and hollers when you sing or preach, that does not mean that you are anointed. The anointing has a dual purpose, and that is destroying yokes and removing burdens. So if the Holy Spirit is in your life, burdens will be removed and yokes will be destroyed. Get it again. Yokes destroyed, burdens removed. So when I talk to you about toxic relationships, when I talk to you about, man, how women should be treated, how men should be treated, and all these issues that we keep bringing to the table, how to stop dealing with these kind of people, how to deal with this kind of person, the problem is you would identify some of these people immediately if you just had the answer. The answer is the Holy Spirit. Man, he gives you a spirit of discernment, and he gives you a, a non-tolerance for foolishness. Now, you won't put up with any foolishness because you have power over every unclean spirit when you are dealing and you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. He is the answer to every dilemma. Man, and just like a doctor, you know, sometimes I hear these preachers and we keep preaching all of these problems to the people of God, which perpetuates the problem. Man, if I keep telling you how bad things are, it keeps perpetuating the problem. It keeps you in a place where you need to hear from me. You need to hear from me. And I never tell you the greater person, the person that gives you the ability to do the greater work lives on the inside of you. You don't have to keep depending on me. It's much like a doctor that keeps telling you, let me medicate the problem. Let me give you a sedation to the problem. And let me keep keeping you comfortable with the problem, but never gives you the answer, the medication that helps you cure the problem. Well, I have, I have the cure to every problem that you have, and that is the person of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, I feel him even while I'm talking to you about him today. He is the answer to the problem. Man, every problem that you have, whether it's financial, family, relationships, on your job, with your mind, with your peace, with your joy, with whatever you're dealing with, if you will allow him to, he is the answer to every problem. So this is not job security for me. 
I'm not trying to keep you dependent on my word or keep you depending on me. I need to teach the body of Christ how to stand when I'm absent. Man, listen, I don't need you keeping, uh, you know, having to keep connecting with me. I need you to know that you have the greater one living on the inside of you. And the same person, the Holy Spirit, that lives in me, because Jesus said, not only will he be with you in John chapter 14, but he shall also be in you. Not only is he with you, but he shall be in you. The greater one lives on the inside of you. He's speaking to you. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you correction when you're wrong. What is that voice that you hear? What is that voice? It is the Holy Spirit that convicts you. That's also leading you. He guides you. He comforts you. He counsels you. He's the one that tells you, listen, and sometimes even encourages you. But you don't need me on here today telling you how many problems you have. Man, forget about that. You got the answer. And I believe this. You can put this down in your books. Let me tell you something. Whenever you have an answer, you don't have a problem no more. Whenever you have an answer, you don't have a problem anymore. When you have the Holy Spirit, your problems are over. Today I have turned my problems over to the problem solver. He's the one that's empowered me and gives me the victory to make me more than a conqueror. That's the reason that I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not just someone who wins. I have the winner living on the inside. Man, do you understand what I just said to you? I have the winner, the one who causes us to triumph in all things, living on the inside of me. This is why I'm more than a conqueror. So today, listen, tune in, because I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit, not, not about all those other stuff we talk about on here. You know, man, your place in ministry is only validated by him. Your purpose is only affirmed by him. Your destiny is controlled by him. That's why I don't get caught up in all these titles. I see people moving into prophetic offices, apostolic offices, the office of a bishop. But what good is that if you don't have him? What good is your title if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost abiding in your life? I hear you talking about your title, but I never hear you talking about him. Without him, you're nothing. Can I tell you something? It is impossible for us even to live the Christian life without him. It's impossible. I cannot be successful in living a life that pleases God without the leading, guiding, conviction, and correction of the Holy Ghost. He empowers me to live the life of the believer. He ignites my faith. He's the one that reminds me of what the word says. Then, man, I got so much to talk to you about as it relates to the Holy Spirit. He's the missing link. You wonder why your life is in such turmoil. Well, let me tell you why it is. Because you got the wrong people in your life. Get the main person. Make the main thing the main thing. And the main person in this season, he's the one that's the main person. He's the star of the show in, this, in the earth realm today. And he is the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid of him. He's only come to help you. He's only come to make your life better, make your life sweeter. So today, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. Listen, don't worry about your title anymore. Just do the works. And you don't need a title. <laughs> do the work and you won't need a title. Do the work and you won't need a title. Somebody would ask me, Pastor, man, you have pastors under you. You have sons and daughters in ministry. You have... Pastors that are opening church. We're getting ready to do another church in Houston. 
this year, don't you want the title bishop? I don't need the title bishop. I'm doing the work. Most people I see with the title not doing the work. I'm anointed to do this work. I don't need the title of prophet. I'm doing the work. Let your light so shine that men shall glorify your father in heaven. They don't need to glorify me. But I mainly, let's illuminate who the real star of the show is. Let's illuminate. I don't hear churches talking about it no more. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He's in your church to do more than make you shout, dance, and jump. No. Man, if you allow him to, he'll bring deliverance in that church and your people and cause that church to be what it, you could never dream of it becoming. And not just your church, but your life. So today, the answer is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And we're moving past what's next. We, 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 I know you're saved. If you're saved, you're saved. That's wonderful. But that is not the end of the journey. There's more. Stay tuned. To be continued. Jesus said, listen, don't you leave from here. <laughs> when he left and ascended back to heaven, he said, why are you, ga why are you gazing here? And the angel said, why are you gazing? The same one is coming, uh, leaving, he's coming back again. But Jesus says, I'm going to leave you, so I'm not going to leave you comfortless. The Holy Spirit is coming to aid you and help you, help you. So I want you to welcome him today into your life. We celebrated the resurrection yesterday, but today I want you to start welcoming. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into my life. Take over. Anoint me. Give me purpose. Give me power. Today, that's the prayer. I pray that you got something out of this day. That's it for me. I'm, I'll come back tomorrow and deal with a little bit more. Yeah, but man, you talking about a different life. Let him take over and watch what your life becomes. He'll take even a broken vessel. Imagine what happens when he comes in to a broken vessel. One was underestimated. People didn't think he would become much. The Holy Spirit enters into a destroyed life, a life that has no more value, a life, the reputation of your life is already blown, and the Holy Spirit takes over and gives you a brand new beginning. Today, I want to encourage you. Welcome him in. Don't be afraid of him. I promise you. All he's waiting on is the invitation. Holy Spirit, come in and dwell in me. I'm a believer. I know you're already here, but feel me. Feel my life and watch him. Take you to places you never thought of going. I love y'all. Want you to have a great day. Listen. He's the answer. Stop listening to all these problems, man. You know the problems already. If you're in a bad relationship, you know you're in a bad relationship. You, you've been knowing that since you've been in it. You need the answer today. If you're in, abusive, in an abusive situation, whether it's leadership, relationship, whatever, you know that already. You feel that in your spirit. You need the answer, and I'm giving you the answer today. It's a person, not a what. It's a who. And he is the Holy Ghost. That's the answer. He is the answer. Love y'all so much. Listen, where you viewing from real quick on this Monday? Where you viewing from? Praise God. Where you viewing from? Yes. Love you too. Yes, Brooklyn. Praise God. New Orleans. Old National. Fayetteville. Praise God, Alpharetta, Stockbridge, Milwaukee, Dallas, Decatur. All right, Deacon Mike, I see you. Yes, Delaware. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being on here. San Francisco. Praise God. California. Praise the Lord. So glad to have all of you sharing today. Type your city in now. If you're on here, type it in real quick. Let me know where you're viewing from. 
And um, I want you to come back tomorrow because, boy, I'm, I'm going to talk some more about the answer. The answer. We're not going to even discuss problems. Why? I have the answer. <laughs> I got that. Remember, we was in, um, I, mean, I, I remember in, in math class back in the day, um, it was it was just funny. I don't know why they did this, but every uh, every other question uh, in your math book in the back they had the answers. So whatever problem you had, that was a um, I think an odd number, um, an odd number. It was an answer to that problem. So you had the answer. So it was an odd number uh, question. You had the answer to it. So I'm telling you today, whatever odd problem you have, <laughs> I have the answer. He is the Holy Ghost. Oh, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm, we're going to be teaching about him on Sunday mornings. And I'm going to be talking about him on this Periscope. And I know that his anointing is going to permeate through the screen and bless wherever you are. He's not limited to a geographical location. So wherever you are, I'm declaring favor and power on your life today. Now, y'all be blessed until tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow at noon. Y'all be blessed until then.